So hello everybody and welcome back to another edition of the Quantum Compass Show. This is episode number seven. My name is David Farrell and I'm one of your co-hosts today and as always I'm joined by my beautiful co-host, the one and only Bella Alvaran. Hi everyone. Right, so uh, we are now getting into a flow with these shows and uh, hopefully those of you that have been following uh, the episode since the beginning and maybe even taking part in Bella's Mayan Time and Magic course, which we'll talk a bit about at the end, or maybe even watching me and Leslie do the Cosmic History Codes, we are in the process of big magic and big alchemy. Not just those of us doing uh, this particular work at this moment, but I would dare to suggest that everybody on the planet right now, since the powerful eclipse on the 8th, of April, which seems like a lifetime ago already, but was actually just eight days ago, um, has gone through some kind of profound transformational change. Now, I'm definitely feeling it for sure. Uh, something profound is happening for me, but I would suggest many other people too. And that may depend a little bit on your uh, mind glyph. It may uh, largely depend on your natal astrology and a combination of both. But what the purpose of this show is, really is to map out or navigate a star chart we can say over the next moon cycle the next 13 days and as always uh, Bella is going to be taking the reins on the Mayan time side of things and I'm going to be looking at a bit more at the astrological dates that are very um, much in this wave spell over the next 13 days so this one Bella is the blue magnetic night right from the 21st of April to May the 3rd so where would you like to bring everybody into on this particular wave spell in this show? Right, let's go into the presentation and then we can talk about um, what we're going to be experiencing for the next 13 days, starting on the 21st of April. So um, I also want to add a, a new layer to all of this navigation and is within this Mayan calendar we're following, not only do we have the Sol King, we also have a set of 13 moons. Uh, of 28 days, which means that our 300, uh, we're tracking 364 days plus the day out of time, right? And this particular moon is called the planetary moon of manifestation. And as the name says, it's a perfect moon for manifesting your dreams, manifesting what you want throughout the year. And number 10 also means um, uniting spirit and matter, bringing all of your imagination into fruition. And the totem of the dog has to do with loyalty, empathy, unconditional love, spiritual strength, all of the things that we've been talking about for a few weeks now. Uh, community and friendship as well. Uh, it's like try to incorporate the community and more of global dreaming into the picture. And so could, this, sorry, sure, Bella, could, 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 could we say that this is somehow a bit like a Mayan zodiac or something that gives it's a Mayan us another zodiac. layer of... Mm -hmm. Wow! And we do and, go know, into it uh, in the course. There are 13 different totems and energies. And it's very important to know to track all of those different months and those 1 through 13 energies, which are simply uh, universal uh, energies. Right. And also what I think is really interesting about that is, first of all, that the previous wave spell was, of course, the white magnetic dog. So we've been in the energy of the dog anyway, but also the very last day of the wave spell of the white magnetic dog is Jupiter conjuncting Europe. Now we're recording this a few days ahead of that big momentous astrological uh, conjunction happening. But by many uh, astrologers understandings, this is a big cycle change and this uh, new cycle is also about manifestation so i think we're already starting to get the first layers here of what this next wave spell the blue night is about and uh i think it's time to start dreaming big right yes and reconnecting with these energies because these are we have access to these energies which are uh nature's daily frequencies and we can actually get the downloads and flow with these energies and understand how our glyph or our archetype actually is embedded in all of these uh, tapestry as well and so the this is the wave spell of the night uh the blue night and we start here uh on day number 183 and we go all the way through to day 195 if you see here, we start the Solkin here in number one, go down this way on the column, and then towards the right, the next one. And we finish the Solkin here in 260. So you see we're coming to towards the end of one of the cycles here. So this is the blue night. And um, let me show you the glyph here. 
It's a wave spell where we connect with our dreams, with our intuition, with abundance, uh, going uh, into ourselves to be able to do that uh, dreaming. But uh, on this dreaming, we want to be able to dream globally as well, as I said before. We're dreaming about a new earth, but we're also dreaming about each one of us. What do you want for yourself? What is it that you haven't been able to do before and you're ready to do now? And this blue energy within the Mayan uh, cosmo cosmology is about the spiritual transformers. And I was sharing in the course that so many people with a blue glyph have come for a reading because they are getting activated. People are getting, re getting ready to do their own transformation and to help with the transformation of the planet at this moment. And this energy of the blue night has the action of dreaming, the essence of intuition and the power of abundance. So those would be the three key words for these wave spells starting on the 21st of April. There is also so, some shadow. Sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, let, let me just add to that, Bella. So again, if we add the energy of this wave spell with the, we can say the Zodiac, the Mayan Zodiac uh, a symbol for this month, and we're factoring in the in or the sort of the, the energy of, the astrology coming into this way, but it's all saying the same thing, right? It's about dreaming. It's about the dreamers, those that can go into a different mind space and start to call forth the new earth, I guess, a, a new earth of with the power of abundance. I mean, it's incredible how all of these things come together. Yeah, it's really cool to see the synchronicities. And this is part of what we want to do uh, or achieve by doing this kind of quantum compass and connecting people to the Mayan information because it's is helping you to reconnect with the synchronicities, which are the language of the universe. And you could start to see them everywhere if you start to pay attention. If you activate the codes within you, then it's easier to see what is going on. Um, so I was going to say the shadow work to do during these 13 days would be uh, when you have a very subjective perspective of things. Uh, if you go into sadness or depression, uh, to have self-judgment, the fear of change. Uh, we are going the biggest transformation. So fear of change is something that we really need to work at. We need to be comfortable with change and live in the comfort zone. Also doubting your intuition. Many people disregard what the intuition is telling them and they use more the mind or what somebody else said. And we need to reconnect with that inner knowing the transformation for this shadow is to have a more objective perspective, the higher 5D um, perspective, to redeem materialism or at least start the process of that, to accept the blessing of plenitude. Uh, we could just dream uh, about what we want to manifest. We have everything inside of us. We just need to connect and call it into us. Everything is already created. We just need to be able to uh, bring it towards us. And we want to be more generous, to transform the shadow, to integrate all of the shadow processes we've been doing, uh, and keep on weaving the dreams. Um, we're trying to create a better world, and we're in the middle of, of, of putting the structures for that now. And what I recommend people to do is to just follow each day, starting on the 21st of April, on day one, which is when you identify the purpose. What is it that you want to dream or create from now on? And you ask yourself question number one. Then on day two, which will be the 22nd of April, you identify the challenge for this dream. And so you ask yourself this question and you can journal. On day three, you identify the service. How is your dream going to be of service to others? And you ask yourself this question. Uh, how does my creativity express my spiritual journey and how are you going to contribute with your dreams uh, for a better world? And you do the same with the rest of the days. And would you, fine, would you say, that's Bella, it for the Mayan. Do you want to add anything? Yeah, I was going to say, would you would you advise, Bella, that, uh, that it's good when we're doing these wave spells each day to journalize and maybe at the beginning of each day, put the question for yourself? Yeah, it's a good idea to to print them off or, or just ha write it, write them down and then ask, okay, what what is happening here? And also these keys that I'm giving here, um, the magnetic, identify the purpose. Just try to go through them and try to 
uh, understand what is it that this is asking me. Maybe the words are new or different. You're not very familiar with them, but they will become more familiar and you'll understand. It's the same for every single wave spell. The same 13 steps, the same questions. So they get easier and easier every time. And every time we go on a wave spell, it's like another evolutionary step and a little bit higher and a little bit higher. On the journey. So we could say, for example, this is how I'm understanding it. The, the day one, as you say, is always is always a magnetic uh, gate. And that's like the attraction. What is it that we're pulling towards us? What is it that we're magnetizing? The exactly. second day is challenge and polarity. It's like the mirror. So it's the lunar chamber. What is it that I'm having mirrored back to me? Maybe that needs to be looked at for this. The uh, good West and the bad, the advantages and disadvantages. Yeah. Right. Excellent. And so then we can follow that. The electric chamber is how do I electrify? How do I give energy? How do I give a pulse maybe or activation, like you say, mm -hmm. uh, to the surface or, or how does my creativity want, want to come through? And of course, the cosmic gate is day 13, which is a day of transcendence, a day of cosmic energies. And uh, there is so many different ways to to jump into these different layers. And I would like to, to say again to any of our audience who are getting into this for the first time, don't try to rush this. I'm already two years into this process and still learning every single day every time we do one of these shows and what i've tried to do is immerse myself in the energy of each day and what does it mean for me and through doing that it's a made every day much more meaningful and more rich but it's also given me a much greater tapestry in which to live my life and uh for sure as some of you will be aware the last couple of months have been pretty uh pretty full on and actually just on that point bill i'd just like to say to everybody that i'm doing really well on the healing front mm -hmm. uh, feet are doing exceptionally well and i'm following the wave spells i'm working with the wave spells to measure and gauge my healing and uh, i'm also blessed enough to be receiving some some healing from some wonderful people at the quantum level and at the quantum level which is 5d consciousness my feet already healed they they were already healed the moment I had the accident, actually. Uh, however, I still have to go through a 3D process of activating that result. And that's also worth remembering that if we if we get a little too ungrounded with some of our more multidimensional selves, we can forget to ground things into 3D. And that's we also uh, added a bit of magic and quantum healing after the surgery. We did. Well, many things were added, but when we bring all of these things into a place and we truly understand what 5D is, that it's thought based consciousness that in that moment that you have the thought it can happen now people say oh but that sounds like the realm of miracles it's like well that's how miracles were manifested by people like jesus the christ consciousness because he was fully in 5d so his reality was like that and he was able to bring that temporarily down to heaven and that is the process that this whole wave spell is actually about it's about bringing heaven down to earth and that's perhaps where i'd like to start bella with the um the key dates of this is understanding what is the bigger motif here that the astrology i feel anyway is certainly indicating to me uh, and that is to understand that the nature of the fifth dimension on planet earth hasn't really been able to manifest properly for a couple of major reasons first of all the feminine aspect the goddess was um was very fragmented with the explosion of tiamat and many other things that uh, have been explained beautifully in the stellar nations pathway but also the masculine aspect of the fifth dimensional consciousness here on earth was crucified 2000 years ago and so it's also not been able to fully manifest and now we're at a point where the fifth dimensional consciousness with the reunification of divine masculine and feminine energies can now be brought down to earth for manifestation and when that is fully understood by the population of the earth uh it is going to change everything very very quickly and i believe that we are now very much in the first rapid stages of transformation on the planet and many people will say oh but things never change that quickly well maybe with the old belief systems Maybe with the old paradigm energy, that was true. Maybe we were in denser energy times. With the eclipse, everything changed. And we have now very quickly catapulted onto a very different timeline. But, uh, you know, this is a time of choices. And according to the choices that you've made up to this point, will determine how this next period plays out for you. So I just wanted to quickly uh, give a, a preview of the, uh, the major um, astrological transits that are happening. Then we're going to deep dive into a couple of major ones in more detail. So... April the 22nd, which is day two of this wave spell, is a galactic portal. Although, actually, Bella, that's missing out something important that happens the day before, which is actually the release of the next module of the Mayan Time and Magic course, which you've uh, coincided with the beginning of this wave spell, right? Yes. Uh, as most things that we do, I have actually scheduled my, the release of the modules 
with the with Mayan wave spills, um, the courses have an excellent feedback, and I'm very excited about it. We're now uh, coming to module five, but people can access at any point if they want to jump in. Right, and we're going to be talking a little bit about that at the end of the show too, because I think Bella's got something really exciting that she wants to share with all of you during this wave spell. But to stay on with the astrology, actually on the first day of the wave spell, I'm not included it, there's also a conjunction between Venus and Chiron, which is really bringing up another opportunity to heal our wounds, particularly wounds about uh, creativity, self-expression, beauty and pleasure, which really is very fifth dimensional stuff. That is the energy of the goddess, the energy of creativity. So I would uh, again recommend that this fits very well with the energy of the blue night wave spell which is going to your dreaming space allow yourself to dream give yourself space to dream if your mind is still very much in the holy burly of monday to friday and got to get here and got to do that and i don't have time to do anything for myself i feel like you're missing the point uh, of new earth and the new earth consciousness you have to make time for yourself to be creative and you might just surprise yourself when you do there it doesn't have to be a purpose to it either right bella creativity that also, is something that yeah can be and that also talks about uh healing with love and with compassion being compassionate with ourselves but also with everybody else everybody's going through any some kind of process uh, and I think we need to take that into account. And is the uh, the energy of the moon we were talking about, the energy of the dog, which is about being compassionate with everyone, with all the beings, with the animals, with everyone. Right. And also, I've just uh, looking at my notes here. What I wanted to share with people was that some of us identified a 40 day journey or meditation or vision quest we can say that actually started on the eclipse on april the 8th which will take us up to the jupiter kazemi uh on may the 18th and uh, as we start this particular wave spell we are starting with day um 14 of this uh wave spell and uh, that gives you some idea of how far into this process we are so this is an unfolding for each and every one of us and i would liken it to something like a finishing school and when i thought back bella about some of the work that we've been doing over the last couple of years particularly with qph i saw the journey again that was laid out by the plant starting with dandelion and then really finishing with oak which as we both know and any of um the people who did our immersions is all about the time the the personal understanding of time the synchronicities that dandelion shows us but also the cosmic unfolding of time that our soul understands at, at our galactic level and what we're doing here is bringing the two into the same place we're bringing dandelion and oak into the same place which is now and understanding that we can be very human and guyan based but also galactic and cosmic and soulful at the same time and the two things do not have to be something that we do one at the weekend and the other one during the week or sometimes we don't do either at all we're doing it all all the time and all we have to do is bring conscious awareness to that it's beautiful because what they were doing was preparing us to be out of time to, to be part of universal time and to be able to be more 5D and to become cosmic humans. They were preparing us to come to this point where we can now go into the Mayan information, more of the astrology, the stellar nations, and then uh, do our next uh, upgrade as human beings. Because with all of this information, our DNA is also upgrading. Uh, we're absorbing more light as well. So we are ev uh, evolving with all of this at the same time right and that again speaks to me of that venus conjuncting chiral energy which is like in the fifth dimension uh, and for those of you who are very afraid with the non-dual aspects of the fifth dimension there really isn't any need or reason to do healing because we only need to do healing when we're experiencing pain and suffering in the fifth dimensional consciousness that doesn't exist and so by default as we become fifth dimensional beings incarnate in 3d bodies we're not going to have to do any healing anymore because our system is just simply not going to be exposed to the kinds of things that would make us sick now somebody of you some of you might say that sounds implausible and crazy but it's not really it, when you fully understand what quantum consciousness is you will understand that we won't get sick anymore however there's still a journey for many beings uh, on this planet to get to that which is why uh, we have the qph uh, plant healing pathway but as we get towards the end of that journey we start to evolve as the um the mayan cosmology shows us into a galactic citizen with fifth dimensional consciousness as our foundation not three and 4d consciousness from that space we can transverse the universe through our other multi-dimensional selves or we can bring our attention down here into the 3d the fifth dimension is the gateway portal between those two experiences and we can maintain that level of consciousness 
consciousness, that level of focus and attention all the time. It does take practice for sure. It takes practice to meditate, but it also uh, requires us not to be distracted, Bella, by the junk and gunk and everyday hurly burly of what is going on around us. And maybe even more so what is going on for other people. I'll come to that point a bit later on, but I just want to continue with the other points that I put here on this slide. So we do have the big Scorpio full moon that is squaring Pluto on April the 23rd. That I believe is going to be very re revelatory is going to show us many things but we'll we'll get more into the juice of that in a second april the 25th mercury goes stationary direct which is also a big change in energy he's kind of done his i wouldn't say wrecking ball movement but he's certainly gone back through aries reviewing everything and i would say that that review of mercury retrograde in aries has been a review of the self you know, going over the Chiron, having the, the Chiron Kazemi, really bringing up like, what what the hell is going on for you, sunshine, today? Wow, where are you at? What what have you still got left to look at? So by the time it gets back to 15 degrees of Aries, I feel like Mercury's sort of role has softened a little bit because maybe some of the revelations have been startling, maybe even uncomfortable and painful. But that's part of the healing process I was just alluding to. That's part of what needs to be released so that the light that is coming onto the planet right now can really illuminate our fifth dimensional consciousness. So anyway, he will be racing forwards from that point uh, and will then meet Chiron again at 21 degrees of Aries, but that'll be in the next wave spell. Um, we then on April the 28th have the other major conjunction, which we'll get into a little bit in a minute, which is Mars conjuncting Neptune in the very final degrees, we can say, of Pisces. And then as we move uh, towards the latter parts of the wave spell, uh, we have some interesting things happening, which I do want to share because I think they're part of the picture. Venus enters her home sign of Taurus uh, on April the 29th. And this is a, a place where Fe Venus feels very at home and wants to make things feel homely. Uh, but I can also suggest that maybe this is the first kind of conjoining of the more masculine Taurian home energy and the more sensual Venus energy. So maybe more of the first inclinations, or we can say even shoots of spring of the masculine and feminine energies now coming together to work harmoniously. So I think that's really, really beautiful, um, Bella, and that, that energy is something that's much needed in the world, right? Yes. Uh, every time that Venus uh, comes to this area, you can see what happens in the world. Then there is a spring and flowers and many other things start to happen, beautifying the world. Right, exactly. And, uh, you know, judging from some people's experiences with the weather over this spring, it feels like spring didn't really quite happen this year in many places that it, that it should have already happened. And so maybe we're going to have a delayed spring, but this is gonna be a different kind of a spring that heralds the beginning of the new cycle that the Jupiter and um, uh, Uranus conjunction spoke of uh, at the end of the last wave spell. So also I think that's really interesting. And then what's even more incredible is the following day, is that Mars, the sort of the opposite of Venus, really the more masculine energy of the personal enters its home sign of Aries. Uh, literally the day after. So it's almost like these two very personal energies of masculine and feminine are entering the places they feel most comfortable and can initiate something that's new. And I've written here, you know, with Mars entering its home sign in Aries, it feels like a new beginning. And having passed through the energies I'm going to talk about in the uh, conjunction with Neptune, Mars is entering into a new phase, perhaps with a, a new idea of the self. How does the self look? A new voyage of discovery. But you Go know ahead. what is great about this? That it's like being able to dream in balance of masculine and feminine with balanced energies uh, and incorporating the, the, the feminine energy. We, we've been talking a lot about bringing the goddess energy or the sacred feminine back. And here we have both of them feeling in a balance, feeling in balance and feeling empowered as well in their signs. Right, exactly. And with the energy of Mars, particularly in Aries, it's very sort of go go you know go go get it and i want to move things forward and very very direct but when that energy is accompanied with a very true sense of purpose we can even say divine destiny purpose that's super powerful and with this kind of work that's just been done in aries on the self mars can now enter into its home sign and race through its own expression of itself with a lot more confidence that hey that was a bit of a gig we just got through there over the last couple of months. Had to review all these areas of myself with the assistance of the wonderful Chiron. And also Venus was passing through Aries too and Mercury, bringing everything to illumination and the sun. I mean, it's been all happening, right, in the sign of Aries over the last month or so. But now Mars gets to enter the picture and give the energy to this new version of ourselves, which is really what I think has been going on in Aries. So I think that's really, really exciting. And I'll add a few more bits to that in a second with the other conjunctions. But 
Uh, towards the end of this wave spell, there's also another major uh, turning point, which is Pluto going retrograde at two degrees of Aquarius. And again, when a, a planet goes retrograde, it's a chance to review what's already happened. And um, Pluto will uh, retrograde back um, and goes, it, it will re-enter Capricorn on, on September the 2nd as part of this uh, retrograde motion. It'll go stationary direct on October the 12th, and then we'll re-enter Aquarius for the third and final time in this kind of seesaw motion it's been doing over the last year and a half or so on November the 20th. So what I'm sensing here, Bella, is that this is uh, Pluto again, just going, okay, we had a little burst of new Earth. We had the first two degrees, and you've <laughs> had a few months of that now, and look at all the stuff that's happened. Wow, world-changing stuff, potentially, if you're able to see it and feel it. But now it's also like, hey, but it's, we need to have a bit of a review because we're not quite there yet. There's still a lot of messy stuff in our world that's the, the goggle boxes uh, pumping at us and lots of potentially scary scenarios, which we'll see how much in our heart, and thus our fifth dimensional consciousness we really are and how stuck we might be still in our more 4d emotional realm space because if we're still getting triggered by the things being presented to us that suggests that we still have some work to do right so that's a little bit of the the bits and bobs as we say around the the major uh, astrological transits and the two that we have in this way spell bella of course are very uh, personal to me and you the first one with it being a full moon in scorpio at a very potent four degrees in 18 minutes. So perhaps we can pull up the chart for that one and I'll um, just talk through how I'm seeing that one. And uh, being a Scorpio yourself, maybe you might have some thoughts on this one too. But um, so really and truly, we can say that, uh, well, first of all, what I think is, is interesting is the uh, Sabian symbol for this full moon, which is a massive rocky shore resisting the pounding of the sea. Now, uh, when when I read that, when I read that, I was like, well, depending on what's going to happen with this Jupiter conjunct Uranus, uh, which could uh, be very, very seismic, both at the personal level, but also at the collective level, we may feel a bit like the rocky shore, some of us, with the sea pounding on ahead, going, have you got this yet? Oh, my God, revelation after revelation after revelation. And that, I think, is what this Scorpio full moon is going to bring us. Um, so in well, the notes is, I've written here about... It um, is a connection of the eclipse that we just had on the 8th of April. So it's go deeper now after all of uh, the eclipse of the sun. And then now we're going to do deeper into what's underneath that it still needs to be, like what um, Pluto wants to do. Okay, let me go back and see, let's unearth what else is at the bottom of this that needs to be cleaned up before we start the new. Good point. And you're absolutely right. And of course, maybe with the uh, the new moon being a total solar eclipse, it eclipsed somewhat the idea that it was a new moon, uh, which is a powerful intention setting time. Now, if you were playing the game and paying attention, uh, you will have done your very, very powerful new moon intentions. And I would dare to say that enough of us did it on the planet to bring about a huge timeline shift. Uh, I know that more and more people are starting to feel the effects of that. And it is very, very strange to perceive that a major timeline shift occurred. But that is what I think happened on the eclipse. And now with this full moon in Scorpio, for those of us who put intentions out there, like along the lines of, hey, I want everything to be revealed. I want the old paradigm to collapse. I want everybody to be able to let go of whatever that matrix system was and how it was keeping us in servitude. Well, with the energy of the eclipse and what came through the eclipse, this will now come to light. And you know, what I've written here, Bella, could be uncomfortable reading for some people, but, you know, this could be resisting uncomfortable truths that cannot be avoided because they're right in your face and they're like, you can't get away from it. It's going to be there for you to see. And so this is where we really need to lean on that sort of Scorpio alchemical energies of transformation because we could also see very clearly at this time the veil being removed and if there's one sign that knows how to remove the veil and look through into the more psychic realms of the fourth dimension the astral planes the human emotional body it is scorpio so uh, it's amazing how often these very potent scorpio full moons turn up at critical moments right and is it it actually coincides with the blue night wave spell is it's asking you to go into the darkness into the shadows uh release the fear be able to go and look at what else needs to be looked at so that once you realize oh actually i can create from here it's is the void and i could just manifest anything i just need to spark my inner light and then be able to create obviously do the final bits of transformation and inner work that needs to happen beautiful right and again we, we see these 
these synchronicities, these these links, these correspondences, these coherencies, I would say. And, you know, uh, Scorpio can see beyond the invisible. And, and sometimes that can illuminate fears that we might have, particularly around loss of something. Now, many of you might question, well, who's going to, to you know, be afraid of the loss of the old paradigm? Well, many people, if they have a mortgage yeah. and a bank balance, any things that could be attached to that system, they could be looking at the loss of that, at least temporarily. Now, we don't know, but Scorpio is to do with other people's money. And for sure, the banking system of the old world really didn't care too much about us, but it did care a lot about our money and how it used it. <laughs> so I think maybe there's something coming up around that. But also, Bella, what really uh, intrigued me was the idea of how are you feeling around other people? Let's just say that the veil does get temporarily lifted into the more psychic realms, as it perhaps is more for Scorpios generally anyway. But imagine if you start to see more of the things that are incoherent in your field or maybe in other people's fields. I would definitely suggest that in the process of dreaming, you want to be doing it more as a kind of a, an insulated activity by yourself and not trying to dream into a space with groups of other people who may still be experiencing incoherency in themselves. What do you think? Uh, yeah, it also makes me think that this is actually illuminating because it's new territory, isn't it? Is this first full moon in Scorpio with Pluto there in Aquarius? It's like, oh, actually, you'll get to see about the big and powerful and how that's affected humanity and how it hasn't allowed humanity to move forward. So I think we're going to dig and, and get shown quite a few things we need to be able to deal with uh, so we can move forward. You know, and the beautiful thing about being a uh, Scorpio is that we, we have that uh, more innate ability to to accept, okay, well, that's how it is. I wanted to see the truth and there it is, is warts and all. It's not super pleasant. And quite often the truth is not how we would like it. And particularly with the collapse of the old paradigm, we're going to, or many people could be faced with truths that don't sit easily with them. Things that you would just never have imagined that that could be the case. Maybe for other people, that's not the truth. They have already seen through the veil of illusion. And we'll, we'll tackle a bit more of that when we come to Mars and Neptune in Pisces, but also with this energy, Bella, you know, it may be forcing us to um, to accept that the plans that we had made for ourselves, the visions that we had in the more, we can say, structured paradigm of the old paradigm of the matrix may not actually be in alignment with our highest good, may not be in alignment with our destiny path. And that may force some kind of adjustment to go, oh, I need to let go of this because this, this isn't feeling so great for me anymore. But wh what else do I do? That was everything that I planned for. What happens next? This, I think, is where Mars and, uh, and Neptune come into the piece because it's going to be about trust and surrender. Yeah. And we'll get a bit more onto that in a minute. But um, the other thing I just want to add before we move on to that piece is that the movement of the moon in the coming days after this full moon will actually try and first Saturn, then Mars and Neptune, all in Pisces. So those energies will help affirm whatever dreams and visions that we have settled on. And that's when Mars enters Aries later in the piece and says, hey, I'm ready now. I have my dreams and visions really, really clear. I've decided I'm on my destiny path. I've done my inner work. I've cleaned out the field and I'm ready to go. It's so let's, bring it uh, on. <laughs> Bring it on. Booyah, kasha. Exactly. So uh, let's have a look at uh, that energy of Mars in um, Pisces right now, because this is also very Scorpionic energy. It is uh, um, one of the ruling signs of Scorpio, but of course, it's also the ruling sign of uh, Aries too, which, as I alluded to earlier, will be entering uh, into later in this wave spell. But let's just uh, have a little look at uh, the, the chart here, and we can see down here at 28 52 of uh, Pisces, we have Mars and Neptune meeting each other. Now, again, strange energies, right? Fire and water, we can say. And when I looked at the Sabian symbol for this one, I just thought this is perfect. It's beautiful. It is a butterfly emerging from a chrysalis. Oh, nice. Right. So I hope you're all starting to get the image here of what is actually emerging. It's us. We are emerging from our chrysalis. And we're having to go through all of these processes uh, of finishing school, which I dare to suggest will really come to their culmination on May the 18th. But we are in the important stages in every single moment, every single day. Every, every part of these wave spells matters. And that's what I'm learning actually here, Bella, while I'm going through my healing process and being somewhat immobilized is that every single day matters, but not in the way that I could possibly have imagined because I've removed all of the daily hurly-burly of stuff. But what I'm experiencing is everything on a much more energetic level. 
a much more multi-dimensional level. And so that's allowing me to connect to other aspects of myself, which maybe from day to day in the past weren't always so accessible because of the busyness of our days, right? Yeah, yeah. So I think that's really beautiful. Do you, do you have anything you wish to say around that before I go on? Or? Well, uh, it also makes me think of um, pushing our uh, spiritual journey, like our, our path, like get on your um, on your path. Uh, we're finishing a huge cycle here. It's time to move forward, but this time bring your spiritual side into into the future exactly right so you know we could say that this is some sort of a surrendering process or even a humbling but in the same moment that we surrender and become humbled and our ego falls away it opens the connection to our much higher aspect of ourself that doesn't have those uh, kinds of we can say back doors that maybe even though our ego thinks it's doing everything in our house good sometimes it's actually getting in the way of our, our truest selves and, you know, with this energy of Neptune in Pisces anyway, it can be very much about the delusions and illusions of our reality. And maybe we can say that with Mars there now kind of pushing in that very Mars way, it wants to unravel something once and for all. And it wants something to be revealed, maybe a butterfly emerging from a chrysalis, which I think is really beautiful, right? Mm. Um but also we get to release what's not resonating with our soul's desire anymore, i.e. what's not in alignment with our destiny path. Yeah. I think this really better, this whole wave spell is about realizing that the dream that we hold within ourselves at the highest level is our destiny path and everything else is the path of free will, which is great. But also if we indulge in that too much, it pulls us away from our destiny path. And then we have to spend a lot of that time in Aries again with Chiron doing the clearing work. Otherwise, uh, we're back into the same cycles, which is not really what the new F Ascension process is about, I would like to suggest. So um, here's another aspect to this, which I think is really cool, right? If we think of Mars being very action orientated, very 3D, let's make things happen. And then we think about Neptune being more creative, more psychic, more artsy. It's more in the realms of the imagination, which is much more 4D. And then if we think about Pisces being more collective consciousness, collection at a higher mind consciousness to other beings, that's much more fifth dimensional reality. So for me, when I looked at this, I saw clearly, wow, this is a sort of a transcendence of duality of three, four and five D finally consciously becoming aligned, hence a butterfly emerging from a chrysalis, a Full more conscious. Yeah. Exactly, Walking to right? your cosmic human self exactly i mean that's just beautiful so that that is what i am seeing bella in this way spell really and you know um when we do that we are allowing our dreams to align with reality bringing a fully restored aspect of our heavenly selves our fifth dimensional self down to the earthly realm here in 3d where we still are i think i'm not always sure these days but i think we're still here and um we can start to manifest those dreams from the fifth dimension consciously into this third dimensional realm because now the dense energies that were preventing that, that were manipulating us, keeping us in servitude, they have been removed. They were fully removed, or at least I think pretty much on the eclipse. And what I'm seeing in my own journey work into the other realms, I ain't seeing the things that were there before. They're gone. There's like a vast open space now of potentiality. But in order to be able to access that space, we have to lighten the load and we have to get rid of the things that no longer serve us. The good news is the things that would have manipulated those spaces and even utilized them, they're not there anymore. Uh, they can be removed really, really quickly with detoxing and a bit of shadow work, but it doesn't have to take very long because it, Mars it's... doesn't want to work. <laughs> no, it still requires you to be humble about it and and surrender to the process uh self-forgiveness uh forgiving others as well remember everything that's happened around us is just a projection of of what was inside uh inside me or inside yourselves uh big compassion and and reconnect with our spiritual purpose which is the destiny path that you were talking about and, and here's the final motif I want to leave people with on that note and, and just to add to what you've said, which is if we think about Mars and fire and, you know, uh, Neptune and Pisces being water, when you put those two elements together, you can get a lot of steam, right? And that can create a fog, which sometimes is not that easy to see. And so I kind of sense that as we move through what I would consider the veil really of that fogginess and that steam, we have to let go completely because we can't see anything around us. Like, oh my God, like everything's gone. Like, where is everybody? What happened here? Temporarily. And in that moment, that's when you can have a deep connection to your higher self, to creative uh, source, to great spirit. 
and say, you know what, I'm ready to surrender now and trust that I've done everything that I need to do. Everything is perfect. Everything is always divinely perfect. And in that moment of trust, the final element of that emergence from the chrysalis can happen before Mars then a few days later enters Aries and says, hey, I'm ready for my new expression of myself. Mm -hmm. So I asked you to pull a card from your pool deck of uh, what is it called? Do you want to share the card right. that you pulled? I do. So I'm going to get a little bit uh, tarot now. Uh, I do like tarot and oracle cards too. I don't tend to talk about it too much, but I was compelled to to obtain or purchase, you can say, uh, a little while back at the end of last year when I was in the US. This cool uh, oracle pack, we can say. Uh, it's called the Enchanted Map, and it appealed to me because uh, I like maps and also have the skywalking glyphs. So being a time traveler and a navigator is inherent in my coding. So I thought this may be something that I might need down the road. Well, I only really got to start using the pack uh, since I became immobilized, and I've been keeping a, we can say, uh, navigator's uh, journal every day, mapping and tracking each of these wave spells. And the card that I pulled for this wave spell is... Can you see that there, Bella? No. Can you read it out? So the card is uh, making a choice, making a choice. And really and truly, I think that that is what this whole wave spell is about. This is what this moment in time we can say is about. What choice are you making for yourself? Are you making the choice to do all the things that the astrology is inviting us to do? Or are you saying, I don't want to do that. I, I'm still too attached to all of those other things that I don't really need to be attached to, but somehow I don't know anything else. And that's always the tricky bit, Bella, right? Especially with the yeah. Scorpio full moon. It, it, it is it, it is about being able to flow with the change uh change is a constant you know it's part of the evolution so you want to be willing to change not be scared of it as a good uranian yeah. person I say. right and, and of course we have this full moon in scorpio just to hammer the point home as uh, this is a time for transformation it's called death and rebirth time everybody and this full moon is going to illuminate how that process is unfolding for you and um you know the the very short version or explanation of this card is really you're required to come to a decision now mm -hmm. and that's it really that's the bifurcation point in a nutshell everybody uh, I mean, probably you've already made your choices. And I would like to think if you're watching this show that you're already on the same timeline there that we decided we wanted to go on, which was New Earth. But we've come to that point in the show, Bella, where we're going to share our plants for this wave spell. And, and what have we got this time? So we have St. John's Wort. Um, why did we choose this one? It is the wave wow. spell about dreaming. So we need to mm -hmm. open our crown chakra. That's right. In fact, we've chosen two plants and the other one is a, is a favorite, but we couldn't really do a dream wave spell without her. But we'll talk about St. John's Wort first. This is an incredibly powerful healing plant, uh, Hypericum perforatum. There's a whole family of Hypericums, all really beautiful. And they have these really beautiful, almost cosmic stamens that when you look at them close up, they look like exploding star systems mm -hmm. in the center of the flower. I've always found them super beautiful to look at. But uh, this is a plant that's really often known as nature's um, antidepressant, uh, which could be really useful uh, for some people right now if they're feeling down about stuff or their stuff is too heavy. And as Bella said, you know, this is a plant that really connects us from the crown chakra up to our more divine selves, we can even say. And in doing so, the light pours back in. And that is what the name perforatum means. When you look at the, um, the leaves, you will see that they are perforated and they are designed to receive as much light as possible. So this is a wonderful plant to, to put into your system and to engage with at the quantum level, because really, if you invite St. John's Wort in, you're saying, I want to be filled with more light. I want to have more light coming into my system. I want to feel lighter. I don't want to feel heavy, depressed, down, dense, anxious, all of which I think could be very, very easy uh, in the coming weeks, because there is going to be, I believe, a big transformational process on the planet. So we need to stay grounded, but we need to stay mostly at the same time. We need to stay with our higher connections. Yeah. Um, we could and what do a whole... normally what, what we were saying about being able to flow with uh with change, uh obviously it can give you anxiety, stress, and many of many of those things. So th this is a perfect plan to be able to go with that flow. It really is, and you can work with it in a number of different ways. Um, it's great as a tea. Uh, very uh, calming and soothing in that regard. It's really, really amazing as a, as a plant essence or a flower essence because the frequency of St. John's War is very, very high and it needs to be if it's connecting us 
connects, you know, to the divine energies, to the light through our crown chakra. Uh, but it also makes a wonderful tincture. It makes a very, very deep red uh, tincture, actually. It's quite interesting to observe that. It's possibly a little early. I don't know. I think probably it's going to be out now. I always used to find this plant, Bella, actually, back in my homeland, uh, growing on disused railway lines. And I often used to find this plant actually growing in places where there had been human destruction of the land, which I thought was interesting. So I understood in many ways as plants often, when you can read them, they show you the repair work that they're doing into the grid and they're repairing where the land has felt scarred. So it's this is also, a plant, right? So look at what it says, promotes tissue repair. And at the landscape level, imagine an old railway line being cut through the hills. Uh, that's like a scar, right? Uh, and so this plant comes back and it can help heal the scars maybe that we no longer need to identify old wounds with. So I think that this plant can really, really help in this way. And of course, St. John's War is connected to St. John the Baptist, that wonderful uh, cousin, really, of, of, of Jesus Christ, uh, who came before him to pave the way. So I would also suggest that St. John's War is helping to pave the way for the re-emergence of the Christ consciousness that is now really actually present on the planet very strongly at this time. And I hope will continue to be uh, as we move forwards. Mm -hmm. so. And the second plant <laughs> is one of our favorites. She loves to <laughs> come back, but it is very important for this wave spell. It is the dream weaver. <laughs> uh, I mean, I don't know how many shows and retreats and emotions I've done with Mugwool, but it's a lot. And she loves to be the center of attention, which is cool because she's an amazing plant. And I don't make any apology at all in it for the fact that she's already appeared in several of our wave spell plants because this is a plant that can do so much. But one of the things she is known for is is uh, dream uh, enhancement. So whatever your current capacity of dreaming uh, ability is or dream recall is or dream clarity is, if you uh, work with mugwort in various different ways, she will enhance your dream capacity. So really St. John's Wart Bella is I'd say more of a daydreaming plant to connect us to the energy of the light during the day. And then we go into the dream space and mugwood is a very lunar plant, very much connected to the lunar cycles, to women's cycles, uh, you know, uh, to midwifing, to many feminine energies, actually. And so I've always seen St. John's War and mugwood as actually beautiful counterbalanced masculine and feminine energies, very solar on the one hand, very lunar on the other. And um, we, we do want to be able to dream. Uh, the wave spell of the night is, uh, of the blue night, is about reconnecting with lucid dreaming. And this plant is absolutely perfect to, to start doing some of that astral projection, lucid dreaming, psychic abilities. And it fits beautifully with the Scorpio full moon because, you know, uh, that realm, realm of the, uh, the lucid dreaming, as you just said, that, that really, is, you know, to clarify, is when we get fully conscious in the dream space and that really is the same as maybe doing a sacred fungi journey or entering consciously into the astral space but you're doing it from the more tricky position of actually being asleep so it's a certain skill uh, some people can do it much more naturally than others but even if you don't get lucid you may end up having very very good visual dreams where your subconscious is trying to talk to you so what's the best way to do that bella uh, have you have you had any experiences with mug yeah i regard? like i like to have a, a tea before going to bed just a small tea bag of mugwort or the That's tincture if I have it. Yeah, both of those are excellent. And another really nice one is to make a little uh, dream pillow uh, with mugwort in a little sachet and pop it under your your head so that uh, you go to sleep with the energy of mugwort in your field, which I, I always thought was something really beautiful. And again, you know, uh, this is not a psychoactive plant uh, per se, but like her sister Worm, she sits right at the edge of the veil. And so she can work with those psychic third eye energies and open up into that space and allow us to navigate the dream space, but also with with conscious intention, she can allow us, and particularly in harmony with St. John's Wort, to create a dream cycle for ourselves that it can be of manifestation, which I think okay. is really cool. So this is it for the show. Um, and I just wanted to remind people, the course is now live, uh, it's active. It's a pre-recorded course with six modules, lots of great feedback. And only up to the end of this wave spell, I'm offering a free reading if you purchase this course. It's only going to be up to the 3rd of May because uh, many people have seen that when they do the course, it's just perfect to be able to know your galactic signature because then you reconnect with your codes, with your destiny path, with the spiritual purpose, with your oracle. So only, only for this wave spell. 
so that people can keep on dreaming. Wow. So if I've understood that correctly, Bella, what you're saying is that if people sign up to this course during this waste, but you're actually going to give them a free reading so you can tell them what their, their mind glyph is, what their kin is, and so how they can start to work with those energies in, in the same way that perhaps I've talked about on other shows. Is that right? We go into the personal wave spell, how to work with it, when is the, the next galactic birthday. We go into a whole hour and we and I give them a four-page report, personal report as well. Wow, this just seems like the perfect time to do that because everything mm -hmm. we've just been talking about is is how to reimagine yourself as a galactic being, free of the pain and burden of the past, but we're almost with a new identity, which really is this, right? The galactic signature. Yeah, it is like a way of activating your multidimensional self. You understand your codes. This is an oracle. You understand which are the four energies that actually support you on your path. Uh, and people are just loving it. So I'm very happy to be able to share this gift that I have with other people is part of my sharing as well. Right. And as I said, you know, with Mars entering Aries, this is an amazing time to to reimagine yourself having done all of this deep, profound healing work. And, you know, uh, as I've shared on some of the videos that I've done with Bella for the Mind, Time and Magic, this material changed how I viewed myself, uh, you know, in, and especially in conjunction with the Stellar Nations pathway as well. It showed me that I wasn't just a 3D being anymore. I was like a cosmic being and always had been. And perhaps that was the true nature of myself. And this was just a temporary existence. And so once you start to change reality like that, Bella, your perception of time and space and how you fit into that, I think radically changes. And that I would, again, like to suggest to our audience is where we're at. That's the exciting pivotal point that we are at in this transition and this besides ascension. there are many correlations between your astrology your uh, birth chart and the uh, mayan cosmology as well they're very similar the galactic signature the archetypes and so it's really good to be able to understand both where the mayan is like the galactic archetype the higher purpose the higher spiritual purpose wow so there you go everybody uh, lots of possibilities and potential. Uh, there is a very simple choice to make. Are you going to go galactic or are you going to go somewhere else? Uh, <laughs> I know that we've already decided, right, Bella? And I know many of you watching probably have too. But Quantum Compass is always about giving those navigational uh, pointers as to how to navigate the galactic flow of the upcoming wave spell. So hopefully we've done a good job. Hopefully we've inspired everybody. And hopefully we'll see more of you joining us on the Mayan Time and Magic course. And as Bella said, you can jump in at any point. Uh, you know, this course will be there in perpetuity. As long as we have an internet in this realm, there will be that course. And maybe once the internet drops, we'll be doing it from a different level of consciousness anyway. So uh, we are laying the groundwork, right, Bella, for a different time. Type of existence yeah just to remind people it is in our other platform in quantumplanet.world right exactly but i'll put all the show links uh, the links in the show notes and people can find their way to us there so cool. thank, thank you, you for everybody. watching everybody yeah. keep on dreaming <laughs> all righty we'll see you all again very soon for another episode of the quantum compass so take it easy and keep on dreaming everybody we'll see you again very soon